So, maybe you're packing your first bug out bag and you notice that you got a lot of stuff in there and it's really big and it gets in the way and the volume of your bag is maybe too small for what you wanted to pack in there. Well, today we're taking a look at something that can make that a little bit easier for you when it comes to your cooking gear. And this is the M squared collapsible silicone kettle. Let's check it out. All right, folks, welcome back. So this is kind of a unique item, and the first time I saw something similar to this before I tested one before was a kettle that I tested before. I was like, no way is that going to hold up to fire. Um, there are some caveats when using it, but yes, you can use this to cook in, and it's very interesting the way it works. So this is all made of food-grade safe material. It does have a stainless steel bottom for nice high thermal conductivity, okay? It is folding 4.5 centimeters high, weighs about 270 grams, so it's pretty lightweight, portable, and easy to carry. And in the intro, when I was telling you, sometimes you have that problem with your, your gear, and you're packing it in your bag, and you realize, well, geez, you know, I got this huge, you know, thick pot I want to use for stuff, but I can't seem to fit everything in it. Well, here's your solution right here. Look how small that collapses down. I'm going to show you how to open it, which is extremely simple. You're just going to reach in there and pop it open. And there you go. So you've got that size there, you've got that volume now, which is one liter, okay? And it's collapsible, so you don't have to worry about its size anymore. Now you do have that sealed, transparent lid here. It gives you visibility to uh, contents in there. You can see if your water is boiling without constantly having to lift up the lid and look. There's a little bit of rubber on the top there. And yes, this is plastic and it's perfectly fine to um, use on there. You're not gonna get any flame near that. Uh, one of the things they do tell you to do when cooking is to make sure your handles are up and this spout is in the middle. So when you want to pour it, you can pour it out like that. Today we're actually going to use this to make some soup, to warm up some soup, make some ramen with some beef in it. But uh, all in all, I think you would be well served with something like this. It's small, it's compact, and when you're done, you just crush it right back down like that and you're ready to go. So this can be used over a camp stove, conventional stove, gas stove. Uh, spider stove, have you ever seen the Cobia spider stoves? Uh, induction cooktops, alcohol stoves. The only place you really got to be careful about using something like this, and we'll open it up again so I can kind of demo it for you, is if you're using this over an open fire, okay? Now obviously, whoops, let's get the back there. Obviously under here is going to be fine with heat. You want a directed flame under here. But if you start getting the flames where they're coming up here, even though this will withstand some very high heat, eventually you're going to start melting things and burning things. So it will work very, very well for a camp stove. Uh, a good example here, I have it over to the side because this is what we're using today. Something like this, okay? You've got that directed heat right on it, no problem at all. You're not gonna have flames coming up over here and lapping over onto the sides. So it will work very well for that, and if you're using an alcohol stove, same thing, you know, small little alcohol stove, set it right on there, and it will work perfectly for that. So all in all, I think it's a pretty neat little idea. Um, I think it's definitely a way to keep your camp gear and your bug out gear a little more compact, a little easier to carry. Now some people, in, in its defense, some people will use a full size stainless steel camp pot and put all their stuff in it, okay? If you wanna put like an alcohol stove and you know, maybe your seasonings and other stuff in there, yeah, I get that, but for size and compactness, and even if you need a second one of these with your gear, if you plan on cooking with two pots, having one that collapses down, definitely a cool little thing. So the lid is made of food grade safe PP plastic. We went over that. The handles are of course nylon on this. Your body is platinum, platinum vulcanized silicone. Okay. Bottom is 304 stainless steel. The color they say is earth yellow. I'm going to call that green. I don't know about yellow. You guys may see it as yellow. It might be the box kind of giving off the green. But if you just look at it alone, I don't know, kind of an OD green sort of maybe a little bit of desert tan thrown in there. So on this, the flame diameter should be smaller than the inner diameter of the pot bottom, like we explained. You don't want fire going up over the top or the sides here, okay? Handles should always be vertical when using it, because you don't want that heat to come up and melt them. And this should always be centered in the middle here. Your pour spout should always be centered in the middle so that it's easier to pour. If you stick it like this, obviously, whoops, let's put that down. If you stick it like this, obviously, and try to uh, pour, it's going to make a bit more mess than putting it right in the middle. It'll make it a lot easier to uh, stick it there. And it does have a thing on top, do not expose walls to flame. That's going to be on there all the time. It's not a sticker that peels off. That's just a warning for you. So, if your plan includes an alcohol stove, 
a regular propane stove or camp stove. Hey, perfect. So let's do a quick little demo of this. I'm going to fill it up with water. I'm going to get my little stove ready and we're going to make some ramen soup here. I have some of this new King of Ramen Nissan Rao, 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 whatever it is. Soy sauce flavor. I'm going to toss it in there and see how well it works and uh, try it out. And I'm also going to add a little bit of a ground beef. I have it hydrating over here. This is my free threat wholesaler ground beef because it kind of makes like a beef chow mein or beef lo mein. Um, you can add vegetables into it, whatever. So it kind of makes for a nice little more hearty meal than just the ramen itself. And by the way, folks, if you're interested, all you got to do is click that link down at the bottom and check out freeze-dried wholesalers. They have everything freeze-dried. And my link saves you 15% just by going there. So let's get this set up. Let's get this going and try it out and see how well it holds up. All right, so we got the stove set up over here. I'm just going to turn that on a little bit here. There we go. There we are. I want to leave it a little low in the beginning because I want to make sure my flames aren't going to go over the sides. We're going to add some water to this right now. And I'm just going to add enough to cook this in. No real precise measurements on it. I just want to add it up maybe to that first line in there. That's good. There we go. That's about right. Now we're going to stick it on here. I'm going to put my lid on to speed up the boiling times. Stick it on here and try it out. So there we go. Obviously, your flame is not coming over the sides. Even if I turn it up, it's a very focused flame. I'm looking in the back, making sure nothing's melting. Looks good. Let's give it a run and see how well this works. So I guess we can kind of make this a food review as well. Wasn't it nice of them to shape this in a perfect circle? Now, I know they say don't put those down to the side, and I'm not intending on doing that for long. But there we go. I want to stick the noodles in. It's not boiling yet. It's not even ready yet. But, there we go. It will be soon. So we're going to fire that back up and let it go. I do have the uh, packet here, and this is kind of a liquid for that soup. So we're going to try this out and see, uh, see how it works. All right, so the meat's all hydrated, and that didn't come with it. I'm just adding that. As you can see, we're getting a nice boil going on here, or the start of one. Seems to be working pretty well. It's holding up. I don't smell any burning plastic. Everything's holding together. It's not overly hot on the sides. So that's a bonus. Don't see any leakage anywhere from around the outside of it. So definitely holding up. Let's give it a few more minutes when those noodles are ready. And we will bring you back when we're all done and try it out. Alright, so the noodles are almost done. I'm going to dump in the, the beef here. See how we like it. It's already hydrated. I have it just kind of simmering. These noodles do take a little bit longer than regular ramen noodles. They seem to be of a bit of a different consistency. Maybe a little bit of a better taste to them. That's good. So we'll just let this simmer for a few more minutes. Give you a look at the noodles there. As you can see. So far, this thing's holding up perfectly. I did notice, that while I was cooking, I did notice something on the sides here. Okay? They have um, a thing here that says Max Full, Max Safe Fill. And then a four cup graduation mark. Find it kind of add that they'd add, odd that they'd add a four cup graduation mark when the max safe is about here. They're three and a half cups. But you get the idea. I mean, obviously, most of us are going to be doing two, two and a half cups for freeze dried entrees or stuff like that. So, not really a big deal. I can't see where I'd be doing four cups of something, you know, unless I'm out there with another person. And that other person should probably be having their own cook gear. So, let's let this finish simmering here a little bit. We'll pour in this, we'll try it out, and I'll give you my final thoughts on this pot, because it seems to be holding up pretty darn well. And I do like the fact that it can be used, you know, I could put some instant coffee in there, some tea, whatever, and use it as a teapot, as well as a cooking pot. So, I'll bring you back in a few minutes. So, as usual, when I make ramen soup, I don't like a ton of broth with it, so I did strain off the broth using that. Very easy to do, I did it over on the other side. I still have a little broth in there. We're adding the mix now. Now, by the directions of this soup, they say to add the mix to the water first, and then add the noodles and everything else you're going to add to it. But we're doing it this way. Because really, we're testing out the bowl and not the noodles. I just wanted to try them out because they're a new brand. But all in all, it looks pretty darn good. So i got to say, the pot has held up perfectly. There's been no problems with it whatsoever. I did spill a little water down the side of it. But uh, no damage to it. Nothing wrong with it. Let's take it and do a little dump in here. 
Let's see, I can do this without spilling everything. There we go. Okay. There. Now we got it. Get out of there. That is a little bit tough on the top there because it's graduated up sideways. So, there you go. A little beef, beef chow mein. <laughs> and of course, you could add vegetables or anything else to it as well. But definitely a cool little pot. I got to say, it held up. Look at the bottom. You can see no damage to it. Just some marks where the actual burners were touching it. You know, where the feet were touching it. All in all, works pretty well. So, besides having an awesome lunch, I think this is an awesome product. I think it's uh, definitely a great way for you guys to minimize the volume in your gear, in your bug out bags, and having a little more efficient use of space in your gear. Um, and it does cool down rather quickly. Feeling the bottom. Yeah, the bottom's actually cool enough to keep my hands there and touch. So, not bad. It does cool down quickly, so that is a plus. So that is the M squared collapsible silicone kettle. These run for $29.99. So you figure around 30 bucks. And um, you know, they're kind of along the lines of all the other collapsible stuff that you've seen online. But uh, I think they're made a little bit better. Some of the reviews that I've read from other people that have used basically the knockoffs of this type of product have uh, have not been positive. And this one pretty much had all decent reviews on it. So I really can't complain about it. This is something I will personally be using. This is something I purchased myself to test. So I'm not uh, I'm not trying to sell you this because I'm going to make some money off it. I bought this myself. Also, too, I noticed on the other side we do have milliliter on the side. It's three five hundred milliliter, seven hundred fifty milliliter max safe fill, and then one liter. So they call it a one liter container, but it really only will hook up about uh, like a little bit under that. Like a four cup, but we're going to say three and a half cup. But hey, you know what? For what it does, and the fact that it saves on space, and makes it a little more efficient use of your packing of your gear, I got to say it's a really cool item. I think this is going to go in my vehicle kit, and I'm going to be able to get rid of that pot that I have in there. A lot of my food in my vehicle kit has transitioned over from MREs to all freeze-dried now. Some of even homemade freeze-dried entrees with the freeze-dried wholesaler stuff. So um, all I really need to do in my vehicle kit is boil water. And this will be perfect. And what I use in there is a gel alcohol stove from Sterno. So again, this is perfect. There's no open flames. Nothing's going to be burning like crazy. It's just for my emergency cooking. So I'll probably be adding this to my vehicle kit and getting rid of that big heavy pot set that's in there. The stainless steel camp pot set. Anyway, folks, the dimensions on it, 6 by 1 inches by 6 by 1 inches by 4.3 inches. That is up total like that. Um, expanded. The item weight, 11.7 ounces, so not too bad on the weight. And when you're all done, you wash it up, collapse it down, put your lid on it, and you're ready to go. Just carry it right out. And you can see that it's still warm, but nowhere near hot enough to, you know, hurt my hands or anything. So, definitely a cool little item. This is the M-Square Collapsible Silicone Kettle. I will leave a link down below. I'll put it in my Amazon store if you're interested in checking it out. And I will leave a link down below directly to it. Like I said... They're about 30 bucks. There is a link, there is a coupon from Amazon on there. You know where the price is and it says, says five, save 5% five if you click this? There is a 5% coupon on there right now. Again, I don't know how long Amazon is going to keep that up there. Could be today, could be tomorrow, could be gone in a week. So check it out if you're interested in picking one up. I definitely think it's worth the money and I do like the fact that it's compact. I do like that. Anyway, folks, that's the video for today. Don't forget to check out all the links down below. We have our Amazon store. Again, our freeze dried wholesaler link. If you're interested in getting some of that food, um, you'll save 15% just by using my link right there uh, at freestrideholesaler.com. So use my link and you'll save your 15%. We have our My Patriot Supply link down below. That's preparewithiridium.com, preparewithiridium.com. $150 off a three-month kit, $50 off a four-week kit of food for your family to get prepared in these uncertain times. Definitely something you need. And a Thrive Life freeze-dried food store down below that. That is my personal Thrive Life store. And uh, I welcome all you new people that have joined up as delivering consultant customers. Anyway, folks, thanks for watching. Stay safe and stay prepared.